All right, here we are. Ah, it's another Wednesday. I apologize. My table is a little wobbly. I don't know what that's all about. But, okay, and I'm hot already. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to For Connect with Bishop Detria L. Gates. Uh, tonight, I am going to continue my series. Um, I, it's a series now. Uh, How I Became Antichrist, Part 2. So we're going to wait just a few minutes, um, and then we'll get started, let's say, in the next two or three minutes. So if you want to grab something cool to drink or um, call a few folks and tell them to join you tonight, that'd be awesome. Um, again, we're going to get started in just a few moments. All right, listen, while we're waiting to get started, if you're ever in the Los Angeles area, please come and see me every Sunday, first, second, and third Sunday. Uh, we hold service at 3 o'clock p.m. at the Barbara Morrison Performing Art Center, 4305 Degden Boulevard in the city of Los Angeles. We are in the Mert Park area right in the Crenshaw District. So look us up. Come see me. I'll be glad to see you. Um, also, this Sunday is our fourth Sunday. Every fourth Sunday, we do service in the park. Uh, it's called Four Pop Pop. It's our community day outreach. It's our casual community day. We go out and pass out clothing, food, uh, personal effect items to those who are less fortunate to us than us. So if you're in the Los Angeles area this Sunday, come and join us. We will be at Lamert Park right on Vernon and Crenshaw. Excuse me, we'll be there from, usually we're there between 3 and 5. So come join us. You'll be glad you did. But come early because I think we're going to pop up at a couple of places this Sunday. Not sure, but that is the plan. All right. All right. We're going to get started in just a minute. Uh, I want to shout out and welcome those of you who are joining me via our conference call. Um, and I believe that number six four one seven one five. 0700. If you have family members or friends who do not have Facebook, they can simply dial area code 641 715 0755. And I believe the access code is 435 49 3532. If that's not correct, go on our website www.thor.life and we'll uh, you'll find all the information there. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me uh, pray first and then we're going to jump right into it. Father, we thank you uh, for being so good. We thank you for being so kind. We thank you for being so faithful. We thank you for being righteous. Just We thank you for being the only constant in our lives. God, we ask that you continue to bless this uh, gathering tonight, those who uh, connect live and those who may uh, log on later. Father, I thank you for their lives and I thank you for all that you're doing and all that you're going to do. Now, God, as we get into this subject matter, I pray for grace. I, I pray for the boldness to be authentic and to be open, to be vulnerable, to keep it 100% uh, percent pure. I thank you for it right now in the name of Jesus and the lives that this particular series will touch. We thank you that it is all to your glory, to your honor, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you, Sandra Hudson. It was a blessing uh, meeting you and your wife this past Sunday. 
you blessed our service. Your presence uh, blessed our service. And so we thank God for you. All right, let's get started. Tonight, I am going to, um, I'm going to keep it going until God release me to do something differently. I believe uh, this subject matter is important. Uh, it impacted my life when I realized, uh, number one, that I had become antichrist. Um, but, and, and I shared that uh, video, if you will, maybe about two months ago, but just recently last week, uh, God put it on my heart to share how I became anti-Christ. God bless you, Renita. Grandmother is along. Uh, she's watching. And how you doing, grandmother? God bless you. I saw your picture Sunday. You look mighty, 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 mighty good. God is good. God is faithful. We are still praying for you and we will continue to pray for you that God will continue to strengthen you and keep you and raise you up. God bless you. Thank God for you. So let me, uh, uh, so again, um, uh, I felt compelled to share how I became antichrist. And just between last week and this week, I realized that there may be other people who have become antichrist and don't even realize it. I didn't for years, for years, for years. I did not realize it. God bless you, Lori. I uh, thank God for you. Um, so let's get into it. But let me ask you a question. Do you know a person who used to love, love, love going to church, used to participate in the uh, they used to serve on the Ursha board. Uh, perhaps they were a deacon in the local church, an active member, but now they won't, they, they don't want to have anything to do with church. Do you know anybody like that? Have you noticed that at the mention, uh, and I kind of jumped down some things just to kind of give myself a flow. I don't want to go all over the place, so just bear with me. Um, have you noticed that at the mention of church, Pastor Wallace, how are you in Indianapolis? God bless you. Um, I know it's late, but thank you for logging on. Um, have you noticed that at the mention or the thought uh, of going to any church function is met with immediate rejection? I remember last year I uh, had a meeting with one of the uh, young ladies in our corporate office and after our meeting I slipped her a palm card regarding an event, a live e event, a Thor live event and she asked me, she said, um, hey, does this have anything at all to do with church? And before I can shape my lips to say yes. She said, oh, no, 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 mm -mm, no, 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 no. I don't want to have anything to do with church. Do you know anyone who would rather die and go to hell than to step foot in a church? I remember uh, this girl years ago who used to style my hair when I wore it short. It was really, really short, really cute too. Um, I remember one particular day I was in her salon and I can't remember what we were really talking about, uh, but she said that to me. She said, D, I would rather die and go to hell than to step my foot in another church. And that hurt me. How could someone come to that conclusion that they would rather die and go to hell before stepping foot in another church? Do you have a family member or know a family member um, who was devoted to church? They, I mean, they were constantly going to church, but because of how uh, that particular family member was treated um, and how they were affected by the church, now the family members don't want to go, go to that church. Yeah, I know this is a tough, um, it's, this is something that really, really think about it. It's a tough thought. It's a tough, tough subject matter, but let's get into it. Do you know people who would rather stay home 
on Saturday or, or Sunday and worship God in their own way. Look, I just rather, I, I don't want to go through the hassle. I, I just don't want to go through it. I just, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I've been hurt. I don't want to go to church. Uh, I would rather stay home and uh, uh, thumb the channels or perhaps uh, just stay home. I would just rather stay home. Or uh, when it comes to tithing, I would rather uh, give to someone on the street. And there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, uh, that they would rather give to someone on the street than to tithe. Uh, and I get that. I get that. Um, think about it. Uh, the people I just mentioned or referred to are people who used to love Church, do you know anybody who you in your family, your friends, uh, uh, your acquaintances, your, your circle of influence, do you know anybody who used to go to church, used to love to be actively involved in church, but now they just don't want to have anything to do with church. Now, there, there are individuals um, uh, who may not go to church. Because of whatever, I'm talking about me tonight, but they still have a love for God. They still desire a relationship with God, Mother God. They, they still want to connect with God. They have something on the inside that resonate, vibrate with God, and, and they, they still want that. They don't want to have anything to do with church. But 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 they uh, still have that desire, that longing, uh, that desire for connectivity to God, to their brothers and sisters, and would wish, they would rather, they would prefer on a Sunday morning to come to church and gather uh, with the family of God, the people of God, and worship and praise and magnify God. They would rather do that, but because of uh, past pain, they've determined that it is too painful. It is too painful. It is. It is too. Uh, too painful. It's. It's a heartbreak. It's too painful. So they decide not to go to church. Would rather go to church. Would prefer. I mean, that's how they were raised. They. They grew up uh, with church and going to church as part of uh, their lifestyle. But because of past hurts, they've decided or determine that it's better not to go, although it is painful not to go. Ah, so look at it. It's painful to go, and because of the pain, I'm not going. But it is equally painful not to go, but the decision is made not to go. Mm. But what about those who are still going to church? Habitually, we, we've done it habitually because... Um, of your love for God, you have settled. And in a lot of cases, because of your love for God, you have settled for going through the motion of going to church. Been hurt, been dis disappointed, been... Uh, 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 you've just been hurt, you've been devastated. Your life has been turned upside down because of things that you've experienced in the church. and um, But you've managed to... Um, um, go through the motion of going to church. You have, uh, you haven't had a real breakthrough in years. How many of you, do you know people who have been in church and, oh yeah, we may shout and there's nothing wrong with that. Don't get, don't misconstrue my point. Uh, but you, you're going through the motion and you know it on the inside. It's just, uh, I've been in church so long. I know how to fake it. I know how to fade the funk, if you will. Uh, you go through the motion, but you haven't had a real breakthrough in years. You have built a shell uh, or have allowed uh, all the antics to numb you so that you no longer feel the pain. In other words, you've been in church so long. You've gone through this thing so long until it doesn't even phase you. It doesn't even bother you. You've, you've uh, built this shell, if you will, around your heart. Uh, you no longer feel the pain. You no longer feel uh, the heartbreak, the disappointments. And you're doing so. Uh, and in doing so, God can't touch, touch you like you used to because you've created this shell. Watch this so that you can endure it, so that you can put up with it, so that it doesn't phase you. But in the interim, 
this shell or this facade keeps God from touching you like you used to be touched. Hmm? Wow. Wow. But for him to do so, for God to touch you like you used to be touched means you have to lower your defenses. And some of you, uh, uh, like I didn't, don't even know that that's the case. You, you don't even know that that's the case. You don't even know that you're still going through this motion. You have a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Uh, only because it is associated, hear me now, with the pain and the hurt and the disappointment and the frustration that you, uh, that you experience. Now listen at this. It's not because uh, of the pain and the frustration you heard because of the word correcting you. But it's because of other things, and I'm going to get into my own experience, and hopefully it will resonate with you, and you can resonate or relate to what I'm talking about. So listen, I, I'm talking about t me tonight. But it wasn't, and, and my point is, a lot of times we've gone through the motion and have done it for years, and don't even realize how far we have moved away from God. We don't even realize it. We we don't have a clue. And so it wasn't until I went on a a day fast back in November, October, November. And um it, it was during this fast that oh my God, I felt the presence of the Lord. Yes, I've preached at places and I've done revivals and concerts and workshops. I've pastored my own church. I've uh, prayed for folks. I've laid hands on folks, but I hadn't felt the power of God touch me like he touched me during that time when I went on a fast. And it was in that moment that I realized, oh my God, I have become anti-Christ. Now, let me explain that if I can. The things that, you know, tearing on the altar and just really going after God, really just selling out, if you will, to God, really just giving my heart to God, worshiping him and praising him and, and, and having that uh, relationship with God. I experienced those most with God in a place called the church where I also experienced experienced much grief. Uh, my, my innocence was taken advantage of. My uh, naivety was taken advantage of. The fact that I loved God and was willing to do whatever for God was taken advantage of. I was manipulated. And see what happened, listen to me well, it happened over a period of time. It was gradual. It was methodic. It was systematic. It was, it was. if you ask and I'll tell you, it was devised. It was strategy. It was purposeful. It was intentional. But over a period of time, I uh, became more distant from God and did not know it. Love God. That didn't change. But what happened, what happened at some point, I began to protect myself from the hurt and the pain and the disappointment. At the same time, I blocked out allowing God to touch me like he did because that reminded me of my vulnerability. That reminds me of my openness and how in those moments I was taken advantage of. Uh huh. So last week I gave a, an, a general overview of how I became antichrist. And I painted the picture how um, we grew up in church and how I had a love for God. I had an appetite for God, if you will. I wanted to know more about him. And uh, because of that hunger and thirst after righteousness, after God, I began to seek God. I mean, I put everything aside. I put my family aside. I put friends aside. Listen, I put love aside. I put relationships aside. I put people aside. I put everything aside because I wanted more of God. And because I was instructed, told, 
thought that I had to come out from among them and be separate, that I had to just, anything that wasn't like God, anything that wasn't, it wasn't, hear me, it wasn't that it wasn't like God, anything that wasn't like us or anything that was not like our denomination, denomination, anyone that didn't believe how we believe, those are the people you had to push away. So that meant just about everybody. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so uh, now to, uh, and because of my openness and my vulnerability, I was taken advantage of, uh huh. but it was, it was those things that happened to me that caused me to become Antichrist. So I, I wanted to prefix it by saying, I love God. Now, I still love God, but I had an issue with things in the church and things that reminded me of it. Um, and it's unfortunate that we blame God or we blame Christ, so we become anti-Christ or anti-word or certain uh, certain beliefs we no, no longer hold true to, uh, and I call it throwing out the baby with the bathwater. Well, I'm going to tell you what happened to the bathwater, my baby, and the house the baby was in. It was all destroyed. I I emptied out the baby, poured out the bath water with the baby, uh, crashed the sink and mowed down the house because it was a constant reminder of what I had gone through. So last week, I kind of gave a general overview, but today I want to be a little more specific uh, with a few of the events that occurred over my lifetime, over a long period of time that caused me that set me up. Did you hear what I said? That set me up. I was set up to become antichrist and did not even know it. So I want to talk about, excuse me, uh, a showdown I had with a pastor in the parking lot. You might say, Bishop Gates, why are, you, why are you sharing this? I'm sharing it because there are many people like you who have had similar experiences. And as a result of it, you have closed your heart to the love of God. You have closed your heart to the power of God. You have closed your heart to the essence of God, which is the essence of who you are. You have cut yourself off from your source. You have cut yourself off from who you are. And now you're walking in darkness. Now you're misled. Now you're walking through life aimlessly, so to speak, and you don't even know it. And it's the thing that, that you separate yourself from that is the power in your life. It is the source. It is your strength. It is uh, all that makes you great. But again, I'm sharing it because I'm hoping that I can reach someone who was affected like me to know that you can make it through, that you can reconnect. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm going back to, I stopped reading my Bible. I stopped, can you believe that? I stopped reading my Bible. I stopped listening to gospel music because it reminded me of situations I experienced in the church. I stopped fasting. I stopped praying. I mean, you're okay. okay. You know, you can go through the motion of it. And Father, we just thank you for your, good. you know, we can go through the motion, but really praying and getting into the spirit. I had to stop that. And because I had been in church all my life and I kind of know how to, you know, give off the air that I'm, you know, all that, um, I was able to do it. But it wasn't again until uh, last year that I realized that I had become Antichrist. So let me share this story. And the reason why I'm sharing it again is because it's moments like this that chiseled away at my love for God, my, my connectivity to the church. Um, here it is. I'm approached in the parking lot by a pastor who is to be uh, instrumental in building me up, in equipping me for ministry, in equipping in uh, helping me to establish a more sure relationship with God. Uh, here is this one who I trusted and believed would pour into my life 
so that I would have uh, substance to pour into the lives of other people. Um, and so here we are in the parking lot in front of the church. And what happened, I used to be uh, predictable in that everybody knew on Sunday where I would be. Everybody knew on Monday where I would be. You, your, your finger on me at any time. I was at the church 24 hours, 365. I was, I, I was the go-to girl at the church. I, 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 I did all I could to make it happen. I was uh, dependable. I was reliable. If I'm in it, I'm in it 100%. Uh, and you can count on that. Uh, you could peg me. You knew exactly where I was. My, the, for Christ's sake, the PIN number to my ATM was the church address. It's not that way anymore. But anyway, uh, the PIN number to the... Ch my PIN number was the church address. I mean, I was in it. I was all in. I was all in. I was all in. Do you know anybody else who was all in? I was all in, dedicated, committed, loyal. You didn't have to call me. You didn't have to remind me about church. I was there. So what happened, I started seeing some things. It, it was like God began to open the veil and I began to see some things and I began to notice some things and I start, I, I started evaluating, re-evaluating my life and I said, oh my God, I, I pushed my family aside. I, I disconnected from everything. I Ah, divide and conquer. Did you hear what I just said? I disconnected from everything and everybody. And now I'm just sold out to this, to this uh, pastor, to this church. There was no balance. Did you hear what I said? There was no balance. And so, but I began to start seeing some things and I began to start uh, realizing some things. And I, I, I started backing up a little bit. I started pulling back and so they noticed that. And so, uh, long story short, but just to kind of get to the meat of what I'm going to get to. So here we are, I'm pulling out uh, of the parking lot. But what you have to understand, and I don't know if I'll get into this, but I, someone, I met someone who helped me understand who I was really dealing with. Uh -huh. Someone who was a gangster Back in the day, new game, new street, knew the game. Me, I was raised up in church all, all my life. I, I didn't know the game. I didn't know uh, game, recognized game. I didn't know, really, I didn't know about that. I thought everybody loved God. I thought everybody was kind hearted. I was naive, I admit it. But this individual called me. I met this individual and this individual, I kind of told her a little bit about what was going on. And she, if you will, gave me game. Uh, I was extending grace and mercy and respect and honor because this is the man of God. And you should, if you have a man of God, a woman of God who uh, exemplifies the love of God, they are do that respect. But this individual was malicious. Uh, this individual was um, a master manipulator. Uh, cunning and oh, oh my god I, I can't even describe um, so this individual uh, began to talk to me about game and about street and about uh, how those in the street worked how they fought and uh, different things that they did and, and uh, I remember one time we were on the phone and this same pastor approached me because, again, they noticed that I was kind of pushing back a little bit and they were very kind and cordial. And, and, um, but I understood that all they were doing was trying to find out where I was mentally, emotionally, so that they would know how to uh, um, regroup or, re you know, they were checking traffic. Uh, and if it was not lined up like it should have been, then they knew how to manipulate me and put me back in place, if you will. And so, um, but then, okay, so then I got this phone call, and I'm sorry if I'm all over the place, but I'm trying to recall the, the event. Um, so they would tell me, okay, if this is how he's coming at you now, if you don't break, and they told me don't break, if you don't break, they're going to come at you another way. It's different. Uh, attitude. It was the kind hearted, oh my God, can I be helpful? But that was only to find out where I was. If I didn't break, then they had another approach. 
then they were going to come mad. Like, what is your problem? What's wrong with you? Ah, <sighs> but she told me don't break. And I called and said, yeah, guess what? You Just like you said, that's the way they came at me. And then, he, then she told me, now watch it. The next move is he going to be pitiful. And he may even start crying. You know, I'm just so confused. I'm just so sorry. She said, don't you break. So we went through that cycle for days. Mm. And as I stood there, I, I, I said, oh, my God, I, I didn't even see the game. I didn't even see how I was being manipulated. Mm. God help me. God help me. And so let me fast forward. So here it is. We, she and I had just gotten off the phone. It was almost uh, quitting time. And she, uh, we had talked about it. And um, pastor had left at the time. And she called me, said, girl, he's going to double back. Uh, and just before I could punch in the uh, code for the alarm, uh, here he is pulling up in the parking lot. I remember what I had on that day. It was a beautiful, clear, sunny day. Uh, and uh, it was another girl, a few of us walking out, and I told them, you guys go ahead. Uh, and so, of course, his approach was, how you doing? Uh, but remember... God had sent someone to help me recognize what was happening. Hmm. And so I stood there and I had to monitor my breathing. I had to regulate my heart rate because I was terrified. I didn't know what was going to happen. I had never experienced anything. I couldn't believe what was happening. I couldn't believe. I could not believe. And, and, and then he watched this. Then the guilt set in. And how could I allow myself to be manipulated? How can I allow myself to be in this position? I know personality and, and who I am. And this is not like me. How did I allow? How did I get here? How did I allow this to happen to me? And so here I am standing in the parking lot. And, and, and here's the cycle. He was very kind. And uh, you've been a little quiet. Uh, you've been a little standoffish because uh, now I wasn't where you can put your hand on me. I, I started leaving work and going out of town, visiting and uh, enjoying life because I began to realize that after work and uh, outside of church hours, that was my personal time. And I began to take my time back. I began to take my life back. And it didn't make him happy at all. And so, and so you know, that went on for a little while. My hands were in my pocket and my, my fists were balled. And I kept monitoring my heart and I didn't want him to see me sweat. And I kept regulating my breathing and my heart rate. And finally, he said, take your shades off. I had some shades. I was leaving church. It's California. It was sunny. What do you expect? And so uh, I took my shades off. And I had a, he said, what a stance. What, what a posture. What resolve. Girl, I was not playing. Uh, and so when he saw that, then he slipped. He flipped the script. Then he became a little angry. Ah, uh -huh, look at you. Ah, uh -huh, look at you. What the hell is your... I mean, he just went straight off. So much so, and I'm going to say it, and whoever's offended, I apologize. No pun intended. No disrespect. But he said, because he saw my resolve, so now he was going to shake the tree. And try to put me back in the shape, if you will. And I'm standing there looking at it. And my mind is blown because I can only imagine how many times we had gone through this cycle. I didn't recognize it. And I didn't know that I was being played. Mm. At the end of the day, I was being played. Mm -hmm. God help me. God help me. God help me. And so he said, I will whip your ass up and down this not believe my ears but I want to I want you to know I want you to know that in high school I took up martial arts I had a black a brown belt in taekwondo apkido and karate and I prayed I, I I felt like Samson I can relate to Samson I said God I I pray for the strength of Samson that if this man raise his hand to strike me, I pray for the strength of Samson and that it would be his ass up and down uh, the street and not mine. 
Oh, God. I have, I, I have no idea how that affected me, but here it is, the man of God coming at me in that way. And all I can hear was, uh, uh, all I can hear was, don't break. Stand your ground. And after that didn't shake me, or at least he didn't see it shake me, then he began to cry. He began to cry and talk about all the things he's going through and he's so sorry and oh my God, I, 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 I apologize and uh, you know, I don't mean any harm and because I had insight, I knew that it was just a show. I knew it was not sincere. I knew he did not mean it. And so I stood my ground. And uh, they offered me some money, a whole lot, a whole lot, a whole lot of money. I declined it. Um, but it was in those moments that I really realized that I had to get out. And I strategized. And this is a this is a shame. I had to strategize. I had to in the late hours of the night pack because uh, I was living um, in on some of the properties that they uh, the church owned. And I had to strategize. I had to pack quietly. I had to maneuver quietly. I had to become uh, covert. Oh my God. I, I had to run for my life. Uh, there were times when I would get a phone call or the Spirit of God would say, get up and leave right now. Just whatever you have on, get up and leave right now because trouble is coming your way. And I remember getting up, didn't have a car at the time. Uh, didn't have a car at the time. I remember getting up, going to the bus stop to catch the bus to my parents' house. And uh, I could stand, I would stand on one corner and see them driving down the street headed to the property. God is a present help in time of trouble. And so it was moments like that, uh, that, uh, that tore away at, uh, it was a place where I learned a spiritual warfare. It was the place where I learned how to flow in the anointing. It was the place where uh, I learned how uh, to go deep in the spirit, how how to trust God. I learned how to fast. I did 21 day and night fast forever and five day fast and 10 day fast and 14 day fast. And it was the time I laid before God and cried out to, to God. But it was also the place where I was hurt and manipulated and taken advantage of and, and just abused. It was a place where I was scarred and torn and tattered. It was a place where I was fragmented. My faith was warped and it was years before I realized it. And I remember when I finally had the guts, when I finally had the strength to leave. I remember the Sunday following, I was outside and I, I, I couldn't imagine, I couldn't I was amazed at how blue the sky was and how bright the sun was. And it was like I was free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, I was free at last. And oh my God. But the damage had already been done. I, I had to now guard myself. From all of it, I had to, I had to guard myself from all of it, and so that's how those are those are some of the things that happened in my life that turned me. You know, when I think about it, I can't remember exactly where or when or the exact moment, but it, it was an accumulation of things that happened in my life. It caused me to push back from God, push back. I didn't know how to separate. I, I didn't know how to separate. I didn't know how it was all uh, mingled together. I did not know how to separate one from the other. And like I said earlier, it was not until I took time out to fast 
and I begin to feel the presence of God as I had never uh, felt it before in a while. And so it was that moment that brought me back to the place where I could now see. I saw two things. Number one, I saw that I had become anti-Christ. And number two, I could see how the enemy can use the very thing designed to bless you. How he can take that and try to destroy your life. Because what happened was I disconnected myself unknowingly from the thing that gave me power. I didn't want to stay in the word. I didn't pray like I used to. I didn't fast like I used to. I didn't, you don't need to do all that. It doesn't take all of that. But that is where we connect with source. That is what gives us power. That is where the anointing comes from. That is what gives us the ability to dream, to imagine, to e invent, to create wealth, to create power. That is the ability, uh, that is the thing that gives us the, the ability to love and to be compassionate and to reach out to others and to embrace others and to draw others into ourselves. But it was, it was severed because of my experience. And so what I've concluded was that it was the enemy because the Bible says that the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus, the word, came that you might have life and that more abundantly. So I begin to see a plan. I begin to see a tactic of the enemy to keep us separated from the source, that thing that makes us great. Ah, yes, even now in our church services on Sunday, because I've opened up to the flow and the power of God uh, on a deeper level, uh, the flow is happening. The power of God is moving. And some people in the room who have been where I've been uh, have even questioned, uh, Bishop, this kind of feels familiar. This kind of, are we becoming X, Y, and Z? I said, no, honey. We're becoming the children of God that we have always been. We are tapping in, into the anointing that is ours to tap into. Oh, I know it feels familiar. And I know it reminds you of then. And I know it reminds you of your past hurt. And I... I know it's opening a scar or it's reminding you of a scar. I know it because I'm feeling it's, it, it, it as well. But I also know that it is a power that we have to hold on to. It's, it is our connectivity. We cannot give it away. We cannot sacrifice it. I don't care that it reminds of past. Listen, this, we're going to get past it. Ah, but we have to hold fast to that which is good. We've got to discard that which is no good, but we have to hold fast to that which is good because that is where our strength comes. That's just, This is where our power comes from. This is where the anointing comes from. This is where the yoke-breaking power comes from, not only for the lives of others, but the power in our own lives. Listen, I stopped tithing. I stopped tithing. Oh, I would give, but it would not be my tithe. It would not be intentional. And I shared with the church on Sunday that two weeks ago, uh, three weeks ago, I tithed for the first time in years. And less than 12 hours later, I got an increase. Ah, and I got some more seed to give. Some more seed to sow into the work of God. And as a result, God has and is immediately giving me an increase so that I will have more to give. So that I can plant more seed. So that I can reap prepare myself to reap a greater harvest because I'm not afraid anymore. <sighs> I hurt, but I will not allow it to stifle me. I will not allow it to keep me from expanding and growing in the grace of God and in the knowledge of God, becoming fully grown in God. I refuse 
to allow it to stop me. Yes, it hurt me. Yes, 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 yes. I'm scarred. I'm damaged. Good. Yes, but I will no longer allow what happened to me in my past to keep me from loving God, from keeping me from having a relationship with God. Because if I do that, he wins. If you do that, the devil wins. If you do that, he wins. If you do that, she wins. So, if that's not, if you can relate to anything I'm talking about, if you know people, if it's been your experience, man, I'm telling you, it's God loves you, and I know you know that. And I know it. I, I know. I know you love God, and, and that's why you're here. That's why you're still seeking. That's why you're still your your prayers. God, I love you, but I, I know you still want to be in church. But I don't. I, I know you still want a relationship. But I don't want all that. I, I know you still want uh, the power of God, the love of God, the the connectivity. I know you want that, but you don't want. I, I know it. And God is making a way for you right now because just as you love him, God, Mother God loves you so much. He said, Lord, I'm with you always. I'll never leave you or forsake you. You may have walked away from church. And you may have felt like you walked away from God, but God has never walked away from from you. This is the time to recognize it. And decree and declare that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. It was a weapon formed against you to keep you from tapping into who you are. If you hate God, it's just, if you hate God, you really hate yourself because you are God manifested in the flesh. See, if, I, if, if, if I can get you to hate yourself or what, anything that is a representative of who you are, if you can detest or despise it, I don't have to worry about you embracing it. You won't. And if that happens, then I've achieved my goal. But you need to recognize that it was just a trick of the enemy to keep you separated from the love of God. Listen, if you're in the Los Angeles area, Thor is the church you've been looking for. And you need to go to our website and find out how you can connect but that's my story on how I became Antichrist. But today, I have embraced the power of God, the love of God, the word of God. That gives me what I need to be all that I need. To be all that I can be. It is a roadmap. It is a tool. It is... There, there are principles that help me to live a successful, prosperous, healthy, spiritually developed, balanced life in God. The thief cometh not, but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Uh, we used to sing this song, the devil thought he had me. But I got away. Well, I'm going to let you know that my testimony tonight is the devil thought he had me. But thank God, I got away. I got away. I got away. And the very thing that he tried to keep me separate from, I have embraced it once again. And I'm going to use it to set 
that God is free. Some of us are bound because of what we experience. We are antagonized because of what we experience in a place that was supposed to give us life, in a place that was supposed to prepare us for life. It was a place that was supposed to equip us for the work of the ministry uh, until we grew up in God and became all. God uh, desires us to be some of our damaged goods, but God is setting you free tonight by the testimony of the life I lived and what I experienced, and to God be the glory. God still loves you. The power of God is still real. The power of God is still real. Oh, I, I don't care. I, I know, I know, I know. Listen, baby, I know. There's nothing you can tell me about it that I don't know about. There's nothing you can tell me about that I have not walked in. Oh, my God. I think maybe if you were on last week. Oh, my God. Some, ooh, I don't even want to get into it tonight. But God loves you. And it was a trick of the enemy. Did you hear me? What you went through, what you experienced, the hatred that you feel for church, the hatred that you may even feel for pastors or ministers or just the word of God. Some, Yeah, I wouldn't even read it myself, but it was a trick of the enemy to keep you separate from yourself, source, to keep you separate from power, to keep you from walking in your fullness. I, some of you are sick and diseased because you have so much bitterness and hatred and resentment. Let me tell you what I was able able to do baby I was able to write a letter and tell them thank you for pouring into my life I want to thank you in so many words for all the hell that I went through because it is because of what I've gone through that has made me an effective pastor it has made me a person of compassion it has made me a person that can understand and relate to those who God has placed in my care, I wrote them a letter and said, thank you. Not only that, honey, I put a large love offering in the letter. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I refuse to allow bitterness and hatred to control my life. The devil thought he had you but you're going to get away. The devil thought he had me, but I got away. How did I do it? By the grace of God, it was that same power that I denied that reached out and touched me and, and brought me back to myself. Brought me back to myself and to God be the glory. Listen, 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 listen. It was the trick of the enemy. The Bible says offenses must come, but woe be unto the one through whom offenses come. Doesn't matter who that person is. It was a trick of the enemy to get you distracted, to get you out of. Hear me. It doesn't matter who the devil used. It was a trick of the enemy. But tonight you can be free by the power of God. You can be free by just realizing that it was a trick and the plan of the enemy. But God has a plan to restore you, to reconcile you, to reconnect you. Yes, Brandy, God bless you. Yes, God has a plan for your life. It doesn't matter what you've gone through. God still has a plan for you. It doesn't matter what you've experienced. It doesn't matter that you walked away from God. He still has a plan for your life. It didn't matter that Abraham went out and had a son outside of his relationship with Sarah. God still had a plan to make him the father of many nations. It doesn't matter what you've experienced God still has a plan for your life. And if he began that thing in your life, he will perform it. He will do it. He will complete it. God is faithful. And he loves you so much. Let's pray. Father, Everyone who 
has the opportunity to hear this testimony, this story about how I became Antichrist, I hope that if it resonates in their spirit, that they will come to realize the most important thing, and that it and that is that it was all a plan to keep us separated from source. That it was a trick of the enemy. It was the, the deception of the devil to keep us from realizing who we really are. Father, I pray as you touched my heart, as you helped me to remember, to remember, to remember how wonderful it is to be in your presence, to remember how sweet it is, how the power of God is awesome. As you helped me to remember, God, I pray that you give everyone who shall hear this story, this testimony, God, that you will individually give them their own personal experience, their own personal testimony to remember, ah, forgetting those things which are behind, forget the bad things, but to hold fast to that which is good. Remember when God, remember when God, remember when God touched you, remember when God blessed you, remember when God called you remember when God anointed you forget the other stuff forget it let it go but remember the Lord thy God and it is he who gives you power to become the sons of God father I thank you that even now throughout this country and around this world those who have been affected God that they will begin to to rekindle and uh, re-establish their relationship with you I thank you that churches are being raised up uh, with pastors after your own heart who will feed your sheep, your people, with knowledge and understanding that they may grow up into the fullness of the statue of Christ, which is your word, ah, that we will be the express image of your glory. We thank you for it. And it is so right now in the name that is above every name, Somebody ought to shout, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, God bless you. God bless you. Listen, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for going on this journey with me. Thank you for allowing me to be open and vulnerable uh, about a few of the things that I've experienced. You know what? I think after tonight, I'm done with this. And I hope you are too. I hope... After tonight, we can move forward together and start exploring some other things so that we can tap into uh, our greatness and begin to walk in that and learn how to walk in it. God bless you, Brandy. Thank God for you. God bless you, Lori. Thank God for you. Uh, Sandra, God bless you. I look forward to connecting with you um, in the real uh, uh, near future. I love you. God bless you. Lakita, God bless you. Thank God for you. Listen, keep me in your prayers as we move forward to do the things God has called us to do. Again, remember, if you're in the Los Angeles area, join us every first, second, and third Sunday at the Barbara Morrison Performing Arts Center. We're located at 4305 Degden Boulevard here in the city of Los Angeles, the Mert Park area, right in the Crenshaw District. I know that's a whole lot, but you'll find us there every Sunday at three o'clock, every first, second, and third Sunday. That is because on fourth Sunday, we take the church outside the four walls. It's Thor Pop. We may pop up in your community, uh, and it's during that time that we give out um, care packages, we give out food, we give out clothing, we touch the lives of those who are less fortunate than us. That is our service. That is our worship service. That is Thor Pop. And that's every fourth Sunday. We're, we're going to be in the Merck Park around three o'clock. And then we're going to pack up. And after we would have spent time with those in that area, and then we're going to pop up at another location. We'll probably stream live so that you get, you'll know exactly where we are. Listen, God bless you. Thank God for you. Uh, Mother Anderson, God bless you there in Memphis. I am still praying for you. Uh, thank God for you. Uh, Renita, thank God for you. Um, uh, Pastor 
um, Wallace there in Cheryl Wallace there in Indianapolis. God bless you. Listen, I thank God for you. I appreciate you. We'll see you next week. Same place, same time. God bless you.